Hi, my name is Maham and I crochet cute things. Please just skip this section because I'm going to go over materials, mainly yarn and hex size, which is important when it comes to the overall size of your granny square and some other important things to know before following this tutorial. I also have some very exciting news for all of you yarn lovers. Handmake and I have partnered together to bring you a massive giveaway worth $250. You can enter the giveaway on my Instagram and I'll also leave a link to it in the video description. I handpicked each of the things that we're giving away and it's a wonderful selection of yarns and crochet accessories. These are the measurements of the squares that I made. Now an important thing to note here is that the size of these granny squares is completely customizable. Because the pattern is so repetitive, you can keep doing as many rounds as you want. So you can start from here you can make it larger and larger and larger the pattern is super repetitive and on the other hand you can just stop when you like the size of your granny square I've altered a previously existing heart granny square pattern and made it the same stitch count as a solid granny square and I removed the cluster so this heart granny square has less holes so now that the solid granny square and the heart granny square have the same stitch count, you can use both of these together for cushions, for blankets, for bags. With that being said, to make the granny squares, I used a 4mm hook with a DK weight yarn, which is Circular Classic Pull in these shades. You can get this yarn and lots more from Handmake.com. Handmake has an exclusive and unique collection of yarns for crochet, knitting, tufting, threads for embroidery, and lots more. On their site, you can use the filtering tools to find what you're looking for. They've got some amazing brands such as Circular, which is a personal favorite of mine, and DMC and Rowan. There are so many options available on the site. You can use my code MAHAM20 for 20% off your entire order until the 31st of December. There is no minimum purchase required and you also get 10% cash back with every order you place with Handmake. So what are you waiting for? This is your sign to get the yarns that have been on your wish list and treat yourself this holiday season. If you don't know what to get, here are some of my recommendations. I definitely have to mention Circular Classic Pull again. This is my go-to for accessories and room decor. It has this lovely shine to it and comes in a good value 200 gram ski. Next, Circular Happy for delicate clothing pieces. This yarn's so, so gorgeous and so soft to the touch. And of course, Rowan Kid Silk Haze Mohair. This is the it girl of mohair and it comes in some really beautiful shades. And remember that you can win all of these yarns and lots more by entering the giveaway that Hanwick and I have created for you guys. Another quick reminder that written patterns are always available on my blog and the link is in the video description. The heart granny square and the solid granny square do start off with a magic ring. However, I'm going to show you what to do if you're still not comfortable using a magic ring or if the magic ring is not working out for you. But please give the magic ring a try. I show you guys how to do it really slowly. So I recommend giving it a try before you try this fake magic ring technique. So basically you're gonna start off by making a slip knot, a regular slip knot, nothing special. However you like to do it, here's how I like to do mine. Then you're going to chain three or four. I recommend chaining at least four. And then you're going to slip stitch into the first chain that you made. So insert your hook in that first chain and slip stitch. This is going to make your fake magic ring. Now your fake magic ring is this little space in between your chains. Do you see where my nail's poking out? So you're going to pretend that this space that's formed in between your chains is your magic ring. All right, so let's pretend that you're doing the solid granny square. You're going to follow the same exact steps. So for the solid granny square, you have to chain five. So you're gonna chain five like normal. And then you're going to insert whatever stitches the steps say into this fake magic ring. So you have to do three double crochets, right? So you're gonna insert those three double crochets in the middle of the chains into your fake magic ring. So the steps remain the exact same. You're just inserting them into your fake magic ring rather than a real magic ring and then you just continue doing whatever the steps are telling you to do so let's say that you just made your fake magic ring right you slip stitch into the first chain now you've got your fake magic ring if you're doing the heart granny square you're going to follow the steps so the first step is to chain three so you're going to chain three and then the next step is to insert two double crochets you're going to insert these into your fake magic ring remember you have to insert the stitches in between the circle that's formed in between your chains. Do you see that circle? So don't insert any of the stitches into the chains. You insert them into your circle. 
Now, the reason why I recommend doing a real magic ring rather than a fake magic ring is that sometimes this fake magic ring can leave a hole in the center of your work. Let's get started with the solid granny square. You're going to go ahead and make a magic ring. So hold on to your yarn like this with the end facing you. Wrap it around your fingers, making sort of like an X shape and hold on to it with your ring finger. Insert your hook under, grabbing onto this end. Pull it up and twist, and then grab onto this using your ring finger to guide you, and pull it through, like that. And that's your magic ring. Now go ahead and chain five. So we've already got our chain one. So we're gonna do two, three, and five. Now we're going to insert three double crochets into the magic ring. Every time we insert three double crochets into the magic ring, it's called a cluster. So yarn over, insert your hook into the magic ring, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two of the loops, and then yarn over and pull through the other two loops. That is your first double crochet. Go ahead and do two more. And three. So a group of three double crochets is called a cluster. So that's a useful term to know for the rest of this project. Now we're going to chain two. One, two. And we're going to insert another cluster, so another three double crochets into the magic ring. And three. One more time, we're going to chain two and insert another cluster, so three more double crochets. Remember, we are making a granny square, so the square is going to have four sides and four corners. Your clusters are the sides and your chain twos are the corners. So we've got one side, second side, third side, and now we're going to do our fourth and last side. But this time we're not going to make a cluster, we're only going to do two double crochets and I'll explain why. So go ahead and insert two double crochets into the magic ring. And now remember that chain five that we did at the beginning? The first three chains, one, two, and three, those three chains over there will count as our third double crochet. So that's why we only did two. Go ahead and insert your hook into that third chain. So one, two, three, right over there, insert your hook and slip stitch. Pull your magic ring in tighter to close up the hole. To start round two, we're going to chain three. And remember, a chain three counts as a double crochet. So this is our first double crochet. Now we're going to be working into the chain two space over here. And in every chain two space, you are going to make a corner. So the steps for every corner are the same. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to insert two double crochets into the chain space. One, and in that same chain space, two. Then we're going to chain two, making another chain space for the next round, and then insert two more double crochets back into that same space. One and two. So every time you reach a chain two space, those are the steps that you're going to repeat. Two double crochets, chain two, two more double crochets. Now we're going to make the side so make sure that you don't accidentally miss one of the stitches. Since you've got three double crochets, make sure that you do three double crochets. So let's go into the first stitch, one, in the next stitch, two, and in the next stitch, three. Now we've got another corner to work into, so we're going to repeat the same steps. We're going to do two double crochets into the chain space, chain two, and two more double crochets into that same chain space. Now we're going to do three double crochets, one in each stitch, so one, two, and three. And we've reached another corner. Go ahead and repeat the same steps. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. 
There you've got your next corner. Now we're going to do three double crochets, one in each stitch again. Make sure you're working into the right stitch and it's really helpful to look at these and just work into the stitch that's on top of your post. And we've reached another corner. Go ahead and repeat the same steps. Chain two, oh sorry, two double crochets, chain two, and then two more double crochets into that chain space. Now we just need to do two double crochets, one and two. And then we'll be done with round two. There we go, now to end round two, you're just going to slip stitch in the top of that chain three. So one, two, three, right over there at the top or into the third chain slip stitch, and that's your round two. Now we're going to start round three in the same way. We're going to chain three, and then we're going to insert two double crochets. One, two, and then we're going to have a corner. So repeat the same steps for the corner. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. So I love the solid granny square because it is so repetitive and once you get the hang of the steps, you can make these squares any size you want. It's pretty mindless. You don't even have to count. Alright, now we are going to make the side. When you're working on the side, look at these posts and make sure that you're working on the stitch on top of them. So if you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if you've got seven posts over here, don't count the posts after the chain space but if you've got seven here on the side you should be doing seven double crochets across so go ahead and do seven double crochets one in each stitch now you've reached your chain space so you're going to do the steps for the corner so two double crochets chain two and two double crochets in the same stitch once you're done with that, go ahead and repeat the same steps you've been following. So do one double crochet into each of these stitches. When you reach your chain two space, you're going to do the steps for the corner. One double crochet in every stitch, do the steps for the corner, and I'll meet you back here. So over here, you're going to be doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven double crochets, steps for the corner. Seven double crochets, steps for the corner. To make sure that you're on the right track, just open this up a little bit and you've got your chain one and your chain two and this is your chain space where you insert the steps for the corner. I've come back around over here. I'm just going to do my last double crochet. Uh, don't do anything there. That is your slip stitch. So you've just got your last double crochet to do on top of the post. And now we're going to end our work. So you're going to slip stitch into the third chain. If it helps, I've got the written pattern on the blog that has the exact number of double crochets you should be doing on each side and the exact order to follow it. So if you're still confused, you can open that up. The link will be in the description box. Now we're going to start round four, our last round. But if you want to keep doing more rounds, you can. Go ahead and chain three. And let's repeat the same steps we've been doing. So we're going to do one double crochet into each of these stitches. Then repeat the same steps for the corner. So over here, you're going to do four double crochets. Once again, if it helps to have the number of double crochets in front of you, you can just refer to the written pattern. However, once you have a bit more experience with the granny squares, you can do this pretty mindlessly. So you can put on your favorite show or your movie and just crochet them. And now I've reached my corner, so I'm going to do two double crochets, chain two. Right, chain two and two double crochets. If you can't tell, I really love solid granny squares. There's just something about the repetitiveness of it that calms me. Now go ahead and do one double crochet in each of these stitches. Repeat the steps for the corner. One double crochet, repeat the steps for the corner until you come all the way back over here. When you're done with your rounds and you're ready to end your granny square, you're just going to slip stitch into that third chain. chain one and now we're going to fasten off so get your scissor cut 
hole and tighten and you're all done with your solid granny square. The bow is made out of two pieces. We've got the middle piece and then we've got the tails. We're going to start off by making the middle piece. Go ahead and make a slip knot. And then you're going to chain 25. Make sure you keep count. Now we're going to skip that first chain and work into that second chain. You're going to insert one single crochet. Remember that I have the written pattern on my blog so that you don't have to keep re-watching the video. Once you understand how the pattern works, you can just refer it to the written pattern. And you're going to do two half double crochets, one in each stitch. So in the next chain, we've got one half double crochet and in the next chain, another half double crochet. Now we're going to do two double crochets. So in the next chain, one. And in the next chain, two. Next, we're going to do three triple crochets, one in each chain. For a triple crochet, you have to yarn over twice. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. We've got to do one more. We're going to do two double crochets, one in each chain. So all the stitches that I'm saying, they go one in each chain. So you don't do two in the same chain. You do one in each chain. Now we're going to do two half double crochets. Now we're going to do two slip stitches. So go into the next chain, that's one, and in the next chain, two. Now we're going to repeat the same thing that we did on this side onto the other side. So we're gonna do two half double crochets. Two double crochets. Two triple crochets. Two double crochets again. Two half double crochets. Once you're done with your last half double crochet, you should have one stitch left. In this last stitch, we're going to do three single crochets, but please pay attention to how I move my work because we're going to work on the other side. Insert your first single crochet, and then hold on to your work this way. Insert your second single crochet, and then hold on to your work this way, and insert your third single crochet in the same chain. Now we're going to be working into the backs of the chains following the same exact pattern. So two half double crochets, two double crochets, two triple crochets, the same thing we did before. I just wanna show you where I'm inserting my hook a little bit more clearly, yarn over it and go through this back part of the chain. Use your fingers to help you push through and do your stitch. Now I'm going to do my double crochet, work into the backs of the chains Make sure that you're not accidentally skipping any. Now I'm doing my two triple crochets. Go ahead and repeat the same pattern. The only difference is that you're working into the backs of the chains. After my two triples, I did two doubles and I'm just finishing up my two half doubles. Now we're going to do two slip stitches. So see how the stitches that you're working over here are parallel to the ones that you did at the bottom. That's how you know that you're on the right track. So go into the backs of the chains, do two slip stitches. Now go ahead and repeat the same pattern on this side. I've completed to my two half double crochets and you should have just one little chain left. Over here we're going to do two single crochets, one and in that same chain two, 
and now you can end your work. So you're just going to slip stitch into that first stitch that we did at the beginning, insert your hook into it, and slip stitch. Now you're ready to fasten off. Remember that you need a plastic needle to do a little bit of sewing to put the bow together. So what we're going to do is leave a pretty long tail before you cut your yarn. So make sure you've left um, something that's approximately that big. Pull and tighten. Now you've got your first piece. We're going to be following very similar steps for the next piece, the tails. You're going to go ahead and make a slip knot. And now you're going to chain 15. Once you've got 15 chains, we have another pattern to follow. Each of these stitches goes one in each chain. So we're going to start off by skipping the first chain and we're going to work into our second chain doing one single crochet. Next, we're going to do one half double crochet. Remember, these stitches go one in each chain. And then a double crochet triple crochet, double crochet again, half double crochet, single crochet. Now we're going to do a slip stitch in the next chain. That's where you're going to have so far. Now we're going to do a half double crochet, double, triple, double, half double, and single. Now we've finished. Once you're done, you can just slip stitch. I'm just going to slip stitch back to where I did my single crochet, and then I can just fasten off. So I just chained one, and I'm going to cut my yarn. And just end my work like that. Now to join the two pieces together, go ahead and get your plastic needles. If you can't find these in your local craft stores, then I have these linked on my Amazon storefront. You can purchase them from there. Oops, I just broke it. I got a new needle. <laughs> so this is the right side, this is the wrong side. You're going to turn it to the wrong side and insert your needle through the middle. And as you pull, Oops, this is going to come like that. So just come back up, go through another part of the piece. This is why I don't show sewing parts on my channel. I just don't know what words to use to describe what I'm doing, but hopefully the demonstration's enough. All right, now we've got it a little bit more securely fastened. Now we're going to repeat this onto the other side. So just insert your hook through the edge of the other piece. And as you pull, you're going to notice that it's going to attach itself over there. Now we're just going to do one more stitch just to secure it even more. And there we go. We've got our first little step all done. Now we're going to take this and we're just going to hold on to it, making sure that it's lined up. You're going to take your yarn and you're going to wrap it around. In your first wrap, make sure that you make it super tight and then just adjust this because it would be hard to adjust it later. So try to adjust it now. Then go ahead and just wrap this around and around and around really tightly and then to end it i don't have much yarn left i really should have taken more but to end it you just go through any of these back loop kind of things and you have to slide this through itself to make like a knot so i'm just gonna uh, try to okay got it and you pull and there you go, you should be all done. I'm just gonna make this super tight. You can do double knot to secure it even more because I don't think that's tight enough. 
but go ahead and secure it. You can weave in your ends, hide them, and you're all done with your bow. You can alter the size of the bow just by changing the hook size and the yarn size. Now to turn this regular solid granny square into a bow granny square, just take the bow that you've made and sew it or glue it into the center of your solid granny square. So I hate sewing, you know that. I've got my favorite pink glue gun here and I'm just gonna glue it into the center and hide the ends. Just like with the solid granny square, you can stop the hard granny square at any round to make it smaller, or you can continue doing rounds following the same steps to make it larger. We're going to start by making the heart. Go ahead and make a magic ring. Hold on to your yarn with the tail facing you and wrap your yarn around making sort of like an X shape. Use your ring finger to hold it in place. Get your hook, slide it under and grab onto the back loop. Pull it up and twist using your ring finger to help you like that. And then grab onto this end and slide it through making a chain one. And let go and you've got your magic ring. Now we're going to go ahead and chain two more so that we have a total of three chains. One, two, three. And now we're going to insert two double crochets into the magic ring. When you're working with a magic ring, make sure that you're working over both of these yarn tails over here. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two, that is your double crochet. Let's do one more, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, and pull through two. So notice how I'm working over these as I go along. We're working in clusters, so a cluster is three double crochets together. So your chain three counted as your first double crochet, then you've got your second and your third. So this is one cluster. Next, we're going to chain two and insert another cluster into the magic ring. So that means you're going to insert three more double crochets into the magic ring. One, two, and three. That's your second cluster. Now we're going to chain two, do another cluster. So another three double crochets into the magic ring. So notice how I'm working over these and not leaving one of them behind. If you're finding this hard to do, pay attention to how I'm holding my magic ring. So it's really important to use, use your fingers to keep a hold onto it. And when it gets too long, I just pull it a little bit tighter so I have a better grip on it. Chain two. We're going to insert our last cluster. So another three double crochets. Keep in mind that a square has four sides and four corners. Every cluster is one side and every chain two is one corner. So we've got one cluster, that's one side, one corner, one side, one corner, one side, one corner, one side. Now we gotta do one more corner with a chain two. And now we are ready to end this round. So I'm gonna pull this super tight, closing it up. And now we're going to slip stitch into that third chain. So remember you did a chain one, two, and three. You're going to go into that third chain. Like that and slip stitch. Pull your magic ring even tighter to close up that hole. And now we're ready to start our next round. Now we're going to give this little square the shape of a heart. So you're going to go ahead and slip stitch into this middle stitch. So look, you've got your one, two, three, and you're going to slip stitch into this middle stitch over here. So the one that's right next to where you slip stitched, Insert your hook through it and slip stitch once again. Then you're going to chain one very tightly. I recommend doing this tightly so that you don't have any big gaping holes in your heart. A lot of you asked how I get my hearts to be so perfect and just managing the tension and tightness of my stitches really helps. Now into this chain space over here where I'm poking my nail through, you're going to insert eight double crochets. So yarn over, go into that chain space, so into the space and not into the chains. And do eight double crochets. Make sure to keep count, stitch count is very important. One, two, seven, and eight. 
there you go now we're going to skip all of these stitches and we're going to slip stitch into the next chain space really tightly so insert your hook and slip stitch now you're going to chain one once again really tightly and you're going to work into this middle stitch over here so you've got one two three stitches work into the middle one right there the one that's connected to your middle post insert your hook you're going to do two single crochets in that same stitch then you're going to chain one and insert two more single crochets back into that same stitch and there you go now you're going to chain one tightly again and slip stitch into the next chain space and then chain one again really tightly and now you're going to insert eight double crochets into the next chain space whoops my magic ring became loose let's go ahead and do eight double crochets into the next chain space one two three seven and eight this is what your heart should look like so far then you're going to chain one and slip stitch back into that middle stitch so use your post you've got one post two post three post you're going to go into that second post and slip stitch it's going to be a bit tricky go into it and slip stitch like that and that's what your heart should look like now we can fasten this off so I'm just gonna get my scissor and cut pull tighten and I'm gonna insert my hook through there and I'm just gonna take the yarn tail and I'm gonna pull it through so I can hide it in the back of my granny square like that now that we're done with the heart, we can start with the white border. So turn your heart this way. Now you need to focus on your stitches. So remember that middle stitch where we did two single crochets, chain one, two single crochets? You need to find your chain one. So here's how I like to do it. I'm going to find the post of the single crochet. I know that's a single crochet. That's one. That's my second single crochet. So two. That means that this one is my chain one. And then I've got two more single crochets on the side. So find your chain one. It will also help if you insert your hook and you find a hole there. That means it's your chain one. Now we're going to be working into the back loops only. So that means you're going to insert your hook through the back loop. So you've got your front loop and you've got your back loop over there. You're just going to insert your hook through the back loop when you're working. Make a slip knot with our white yarn or any color you're using. Here's how I like to make mine. You can make it any way. Insert your hook through that back loop that I just showed you and slip stitch. That's how we attach the white yarn. Now we're going to work into all of these next stitches but only into the back loop. So insert your hook, back loop only, and do a single crochet. Then a half double crochet, so yarn over, go into the back loop only, using your finger to help you. Pull up a loop and then pull th through all three. Next, a double crochet, go into the back loop. Next, a triple crochet, so yarn over twice, go into the next back loop. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, making a triple crochet. Now we're going to make the corner of the square. So this corner right over here so that we get a square shape. So you're going to chain two. And then in the next stitch, you're going to do a double crochet. So go into the next back loop. And double crochet. Next half double crochet. going to do four single crochets one in each stitch so that's one single crochet second third and fourth
forth in the back loops only. Now we're going to make our next corner, so chain two. Now we're going to do four more single crochets, one, two, three, and four. One in each stitch. One, two, three, and you see this stitch is four, so don't forget about it. All right, now we're going to make the this little pointy part for the heart. So you're going to do a half double crochet into the same place where you slip stitched previously, so into that middle stitch. Before you do that, please don't forget about this teeny little stitch over here. We're going to need it, so it might get covered, but please remember it when you start your next step after the half double crochet. So insert your hook into where you slip stitched previously and half double crochet. There we go. Now we're going to do four more single crochets. So don't forget about this little one over here. <laughs> Use your fingers to separate it so you can reach it. You're going to do four single crochets. That's one, two, three and four. We're basically just repeating what we did on the other side. Now we're going to chain two for the corner. And then we're going to do four more single crochets. One, two, three, and four. Now we're going to do a half double crochet, a double crochet, chain two for the corner, triple crochet, Remember, you're only working through the back loops. And then a double crochet, half double crochet. And I just want to bring your attention to this. This little stitch over here is where you're going to do your single crochet. So this little loop right over there, insert your hook through it. Single crochet and we are ready to end this round. So you're just going to go into your slip stitch. Do you see that over there? You're just gonna go into it and slip stitch to end this round. But we're going to start the next round by chaining three. One, two, three. This counts as your first double crochet. Now we're going to do four more double crochets, one in each of the stitches. So start from the single crochet. So start from the stitch that's on top of the single crochet. That's one double crochet. Go into the next stitch. Two, three. And this is the last stitch before we have our chain space. So these are our chain twos and we never work any stitches into them. We only work into the chain space. So my fourth double crochet. Now we're going to be working into the corner. You're going to do one double crochet. Then you're going to chain two for the next corner space. And then you're going to insert three more double crochets into the same chain space. So that's one, two, and three. Now, Remember that some of your stitches can get hidden, so just make sure to move this. Now, the number of posts that you have are the number of double crochets you should be doing on the side. So let's count our posts. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That means you should be doing six double crochets here. So that's one, two, three, and six. After doing six double crochets, you would have reached your chain two space. In the chain two space, you're gonna do two double crochets. One, two. Then you're going to chain two and do one more double crochet into the chain space. And there you would have had your first side. Now, the reason why we're doing different number of double crochets in each chain space is so that we can bring the stitch count the same as the solid granny square. In this round, the number of double crochets you insert into each chain space is different, 
But in the next round, it's going to be the same as the solid granny square, which is two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in every corner space, even if you're doing more rounds. Once again, let's count the posts together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we've got our chain space. So we got to do nine double crochets. One, two. Don't forget to also work into this teeny tiny one because you might miss it. So make sure that you're keeping count. And now I've reached my next chain two space. We're going to do one double crochet, chain two, and then two double crochets into the same chain space one more time. One and two. Once again, we're going to do six double crochets until we reach the chain space because we've got six posts. Make sure that you're only doing one double crochet in each stitch and pay attention to the stitch counts. Now we've reached our next chain two space. Over here, we're going to do three double crochets. One, two, and three. Next, we're going to chain two and then do one double crochet into the same chain space. Now let's count our posts. We have to do one, two, three. That's it, just three more double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook. Now we're doing one, two, three, and four double crochets one in each stitch now look at this over here do you see this stitch right here that's a slip stitch and it's not a post so you don't work anything into there it could also help if you look at your chain three so you've got chain one two three and then you've got this little stitch over here so don't do anything into it you should have just four double crochets one in each stitch and then you're ready to end this round. So you're going to slip stitch into that third chain. So chain one, two, and three. Insert your hook. And slip stitch. We are done with our next round. Now to start the next round, we're going to be following the same exact steps. So chain three. Every time you want to start a new round, you're going to chain three, which will count as your first double crochet. Next, you're going to do one double crochet in each stitch until you reach your chain two space. You can use the posts to guide you. Count how many posts you have. One, two, three, four, five. You should be doing five double crochets, one in each stitch. Two, and five. Now I've reached my chain two space over here. In every chain two space, in every corner of your work, you're going to repeat the same steps. And here's what those steps are. You're going to do two double crochets into the same chain space. Then you're going to chain two and do two more double crochets into that same chain space. One and two. And those are the steps you're going to repeat every time you reach a chain space. Now we're going to go ahead and work on the side. So count your posts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So you're going to be doing 11 double crochets over here. Insert your hook and go ahead and do one double crochet in each stitch. Now we've reached our next chain two space. We're going to repeat the same steps as before. So you're going to do two double crochets, one, two. Then you're going to chain two and then do two more double crochets in the same chain space. And now go ahead and finish up your square following these same steps. One double crochet in each stitch until you reach your chain space. Then repeat the steps for the corner that we did here and here. So you're gonna do two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Then you're going to do one double crochet in each of these stitches. Repeat the same steps for the corner and then one double crochet in each stitch, and then I'll meet you back over here. Remember that I also have a written pattern, so if it helps to have something written to follow along to or to refer to, then you can open that up and it's gonna be really helpful. To complete your work, you're going to be doing five double crochets, one in each stitch, and five.
five. Now, remember, this is your slip stitch. Ignore it. You don't have to do anything there. Now, count your chains. One, two, three and slip stitch into the third chain. And there we go, we are all done with our heart granny square. Now, if you want to make this square bigger, all you have to do is chain three to start the next round, one double crochet in each stitch, repeat the same steps for the corner, one double crochet in each stitch, repeat the steps for the corner, do this all the way around until you come back over here, and then slip stitch into the third chain, and you're done. That's how you can keep making your square larger and larger and larger. You just repeat the same steps that we did in this round over here. Once you're ready to end your square, you're just going to chain one, get your scissor, cut, pull, tighten, and you're all finished.